ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Celebrity Chat with Dr. Professor Vanapsa, the moving dictionary, Basanko Masuti, the only Zambian that has dined and wined with bourgeois or PDGs. When I call one lady, they come a dozen. They think I'm a bottle of stolo, while I stay monoti. Can when I'm still there? Here to the throne, Kasi Sikakumupando, Kamulinso, aka the one for in the eye coming all the way from Chiwombo, passing through John Chinena, hovering around Chinyongola, and is now in Itatayoyo. So today's episode is going to be very exciting because I've brought to you a very exciting figure with a very pantagrarian mammoth and also what I call a gargantuan name attached to his brand. And this man does not need any introduction because he's done quite, quite a lot, a lot for the Zambian music industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is none other than... Mr. Hamova. You know, uh, wait first. I'm actually still stuck on the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm still trying to digest all those things you said. In simpler terms, you are flumoxed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or as matters. Okay, please, in layman's. <laughs> layman's English, my man, please. <laughs> I mean, layman's language. <laughs> so, Mr. Amova, yes. long time. Yeah, man. No, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. No, I appreciate so much. And also, uh, thank you for according us this time. It's my pleasure. Man. Yes, yes. You know, Mr. Mova, <clears throat> there's quite, quite a number of stuff that I would really want to find out from you. Okay, before you continue, can you please let, uh, remove the mist at the beginning? Can you just say, I'm over? <laughs> Why are you trying you know, to where, where, make me look like uh, somebody's grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> You know where I come from. We always place the appellation word to every name because it's a symbol of respect. But now that you've allowed me to say yes, that, please. I will lose my my dignity for now and respect and say Hamola. Yes, true, true, true. I said I'm You are allowed. You can't get a kid. 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 So, Mr. Amova, you are one man that I've always looked up to, and uh, obviously a lot of people have looked up to for quite an epoch of time. Sorry, we are not keeping social distancing. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Mm, I remember the last, the, the first time I heard uh, your songs, I was, uh, I think that was in 2005, 6, somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. When was your first song? Uh, I think the first, it's because you know, the, the first release I ever had mm -hmm. was uh, via Namanja. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, that was uh, me and the late chat for my God rest you so. Chat is late? Yes. My condolences, my condolences. Yeah, yeah. I'm oblivious to that. Yeah, I know you and your English, it's okay. <laughs> Stay in that oblivious list. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he's, he's, that was the first release I had, and that was in um, 2002. Okay. Yes. So, no, actually, 2000. Yes, 2002. We released the Namanja album. Okay. Oh, and yeah. uh, what was. Uh, that was 2002. Yes, 2002. Okay. Yes, that's when we dropped the Namanja album, and then after that. And what were you called as a duo? Namanja. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and the title of the album was uh, Namanja Namanja. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where we had those songs like Kaspaka, Chimaika. Kaspaka, my dear. Yeah. Oh, you must have kind of in any Mukonda. Oh, I love those. Yeah. I love the trajectory <laughs> of your voice. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, then after that, I think. Uh, a year later, I released the Shedera album. Shedera Kunonga, Ule Ufwa, we know Shake your body, Kavi, Chanta, Shishinguruka, we shake Chanuma. Exactly. <laughs> now that's the one that had uh, um, some Tima, okay. Tima Mababa, you know, uh, Oh My City, you know, to mention that. Thing. And when was that? Uh, that was in 2003. I was in grade 3. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Uh, I, <laughs> I was in the village by then, in the Namankati, the interiors of Chibom. Yes. Yes. So, I think you shouldn't have told me that. Why? 
Now you're making me feel like a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Respect and us to your grandfather. But really, dude, you're in... Great three, yes. Serious? Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Great. Oh, damn, man. <laughs> Any gray hair? Ah, no, 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 no. You know, with this guy that has come. <laughs> Go black. <laughs> Go black. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, um, 2003, uh, Shedela. Then I think... Uh, I think Robo got out, like maybe I think two years or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then after that, that's when I released the uh, Hamsway. Hamsway. Yeah, now that's that's the album that had um, Fuae, yeah, Tindona, Techin Tom Fua, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, and then what happened after that uh, is that, you know, I started diversifying, you know what I mean? So I, I sort of lost time to spend on me doing music okay. so like for the longest period of time I, st- I stayed off music why? I was too busy doing other things you know what I mean There's those could, could it be that the music was not paying off or what? Uh, well it was paying but not as much as I wanted you know what I'm saying so I needed to and also, also do other things do you know one thing that really shocked me about you? Mm. How you changed your image. You gained uh, weight so easily and so fast. And people were asking why. Would it be that it was so footy? I was running up a table. I, I, I remember overhearing some of the certain people saying, I'm over in, why are in? Maybe it's so footy. My music gives up with a table. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, no, thank you for asking me that question. I'll, I'll clear this. For those that have known me since childhood, I, I was always that fat kid, you know what I mean? In the book. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? So uh, I took after my mom. She had a big body, so I was fat. Okay. The time that I lost weight is the time that I went to boarding school. Okay. So when I went to boarding school, you know how boarding I Oh, yeah, I was in boarding as well. Yeah, I was in boarding as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for punishment uh, so you don't eat you know the way you're supposed to you know what I'm saying so plus the stress of school and every other activity that is done from my school so you know that by the time I left high school I was with that slender body so right after high school you know I I, I was supposed to have gone to, to uh, college and stuff but uh, unfortunately my mom couldn't afford to do that for me. So what happened was, well, she did try to get some scholarships, scholarships from here and there, and I actually did pass the aptitude test. Yeah, but like I said, the money wasn't there. Which which, which high school did you go to? I went to Chicken Cutter. Oh, Chicken Cutter. Yes, yeah. You call it Chicken Cutter. <laughs> 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 With your slang. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, went to Serenja Boys Tech. Serenja Boys, eh? Yes. Yeah, it sounds like uh, we used to call it uh, Pompopo Barracks. Pompopo Barracks. Pompopo Barracks. Where beds used to fly in the atmosphere <laughs> backwards and lay eggs in the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> then again, they were telling us, could, could it. Uh, could this beard that you're wearing be tantamount to the life that you led in 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 high school? Because we're about the beans the person dev. No, this is just well, well if we're gonna talk about uh, age, mm-hmm. yeah, now we're gonna talk about my beard. You know, I mean it's time for me to have a beard. Then I was young, you know what I mean? Okay. Me, and you know. The funny thing is I remember when we were still young, because we kind of got time that you said that you did. You know, and yeah, even, even here on, on uh, you know what I mean? This is because you're like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, And I know the thing is I've always been hairy, so okay. the beard for me is not a problem. Okay. Mm, I grew a beard in a week. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, like, come over. One, one uh, intriguing thing is uh, where you had to quit music yes. when you are at the apex of your career. Actually, you know, it's not really quitting. Okay, you had to let go. Yeah, because I, I it, just yeah, not I didn't give, give it the total attention. attention. Yes, I just couldn't find time to divide myself. But you are you know at I mean? the peak of your music now. I'm, I'm intrigued. I would yeah. love to know what we really, really uh, drove you to. As in, the way I am right now as Banapsa, mm-hmm. I'm still in the inquiet of my career in the beginning, in the rudimentary element, yeah. and I'm still hungry for fame and everything. Mm-hmm. Now, here was the Amova, the hit maker everyone was talking about, everyone was mentioning about, 
Mm -hmm. He had such a Pantagrelian name, somebody that everyone looked up to. Yeah. Then now for you to forego all that and just say, okay, I need to divide my time and a portion this time for this and this. How how easily did that come to your Medulla Blanca? You know that. <laughs> I haven't heard that word in a while. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you know, like with age, you know, the more you grow, you know, the, the more you learn about life. And you know, the more your priorities change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you see, that time was coming when I was feeling, okay, you know what, there's so much I can do. You know what I mean? I can't restrict myself just to this craft that I have. You know what I mean? So I saw it fit to explore, you know, other areas of earning, you know what I'm saying? So I got into that and then I was there deep and then now my music suffered. So now the only thing that was happening is wherever I would go, I would meet fans complaining, why have you abandoned us, you know what I mean? Hey, shiny, your music, like that. No, it became too much. So like... Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah. Uh, in your music career, have you ever been in a situation whereby you saw or you deemed it fit and the wise, or maybe you saw it that you are actually in the situation of epicureanism or hedonism? So you see, um, this is a mental view, right? And for me to answer your questions, I need to understand what the hell you are saying. <laughs> And then he's there throwing these big words around just like that. Just like that. Do you know the longest word in the English dictionary? Which one is that? Neomono ultra microscopic silicovoconoconiasis. And what the hell is that supposed to mean? That's the longest term in the English dictionary. What does that mean? Uh, it's a lung disease. Really? Yes. Neomono ultra microscopic silicovoconoconiasis. So all of that just to name a disease. Mm -hmm. That kills people. Yes. <laughs> so the question that I asked you earlier on is the. Uh, have you ever seen the fruit of your career saying, okay, this is Ramova up and Afrika, this is what I wanted? So that's what I meant by saying epicureanism or hedonism. It's a, it's a situation whereby uh, everything is on point, everything is good. Or in simpler terms, that, that is what I call as the, the place of Eldorado. Well, at least I got the first part, so I will answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, you know, like. I'll would, I would tell you the truth. The biggest achievement for me as an artist is the fact that I was able to impact people's lives with my music. I was able to touch people's lives with my music. You know what I mean? I've had people come to me and tell me, no, this song of yours did this for me. This song of yours did that for me. You know what I mean? I, well, I even had some people come to me, you know, at our first bunch and I was meds. Why was you listening to that song of yours? <laughs> You know, things like that. But my point is this, you know, the thing is, you see, I I try as much as possible to put myself in my music. For me, music is a form of expression, you know what I mean? And, by the way, it's not every song that I sing that is a situation I've passed through, you know what I mean? Sometimes it could be just things that I see people going through or something happening around me, you know what I mean? And then that inspires me. You see, so for me, you know, the fact that I was able to put myself, I'm able to put myself in my music and people out there will listen to the music and be able, you know what I mean, be able to relate, you know what I mean, yeah, you know what I mean, like, we sync, you know, they sync with the feeling I have put out in a song, for me that's the greatest achievement. Away from that, uh, you have traveled. I believe yes, I outside have. the jurisdictions of Zambia. Oh yes, my music has taken me places I never thought I would ever ever get to go to. <laughs> when was the first trip? Come to where? Hmm. I think. Um, well, are we are we talking about international or are we talking about local? A trip. I mean a trip. Just a trip. In local, it's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> 
locally it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a trip. A trip. It's overseas. Yeah. I think that time we 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 na mind we just become hot as na mind you know what I mean we happening then and I think the first trip we ever took was to South Africa. No joke. So what led to the split of the Namanje? Could it was it the death of Chatu or No 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 no. Actually you know the thing is the way Namanje came together uh, was you know we were both artists signed under the same record label. That was Slim Beats. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which was being run by Bravo, aka Charlie Mulala. Oh Charlie Charlie Bravo. Yeah, the talented Charlie Mulala. Yeah. So you know uh, what happened was me and Chatu were both artists signed at uh, Slim Beats. Yeah, so we were actually both doing solo projects. Okay. Chad was working on his album and I was working on my album. So what happened is I actually, you know, I I got along with Chad. So this time we found ourselves together in the studio and I told him, no, oh, let's do a song together. I don't know if you remember, I think it was the first single we released. We even did a video for it. That one. Nima Kondoira, Nima Vera, I don't know if you remember. I have. I think I've heard almost all your songs. I'm a keen follower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's the first single we put out. So we found ourselves in the studio. So I asked him and then we we got there and we recorded the song. So now everybody that was coming and listening to us, oh my God, you can sound good together. Oh my God, you know. Everybody's just praising the combination, you know what I mean? So our producer, so it fits to say, you know what? How about we do an album for you guys? You know what I mean? Like the two of you. So the agreement was to do an album. Joint. Yes, joint album. So what happened was on that album, there are songs that were my songs alone and there were songs that were just two songs alone. So what we, did, what we did is we got some of the songs that we were recording for our individual albums, we put them together and then we recorded a couple of tracks together as Naman. Yeah, so that's how we put that album together. So after we released that album, we both went back to our solo projects. Yeah, I continued working on my solo project. He also continued working on his solo project. And then my solo project, that's that's the one that came out as Shadow. Yeah. Okay, Amova, I believe um, you've been in this uh, industry for quite a period of iron, or if you like, uh, an epoch of time. Yes, and I believe you've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff and bad stuff. Yeah. Could you easily single out uh, uh, the moments where you found yourself in a Bermuda Triangle, or in simpler terms, where you found yourself in a, a hula balloon situation, or a quagmire situation, or an embryorial situation in simpler terms? Like a difficult situation or a cream cum 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 situation. <laughs> so all of that just to say difficult. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're chilling with the ah, guru. No, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think my biggest challenge, what, 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 I think the biggest challenge is for me, that that was my biggest challenge, was how to learn to deal with the fame. You know, fame is something that's really difficult to do. Well, and I think you know I want I mean? to learn from you, so you need to elaborate on that. Yeah, it's. it's it was difficult, you know, because you know, you find, you see, when people feel they know you without knowing really who you are, you know, I mean, just because they heard your music and stuff like that, you see, they place their judgment about you. Based on artistic life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Their expectations and stuff, you know what I mean? But you see, we differ as people, you know what I mean? I'm actually a character behind the music, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you have a life away from Exactly. The- you know what I mean? Exactly. So now, how to balance it? You see, there are certain things that people want to see me doing. You know what I mean? They expect to see me doing. You know what I mean? So when I'm doing, when I'm not doing it, I'm failing them. You know what I mean? And there are certain things that I'm comfortable doing. You know what I mean? And people would not want to see me do those things. You know what I mean? Those things that I'm comfortable doing are the things probably that make me happy. You know what I mean? The things I found, I find fulfillment in. So you see now the balance, okay. how to learn to handle what people expect me to be and who I really am. Okay. You know, it was a big challenge for me, you know what I mean? Because I would 
I would have to balance that. You know, I, I have to, if I go somewhere, I have to behave in a certain way. When I'm in public, I have to behave in a certain way because people have good expectations. You know what I mean? There are people who who placed me in a position. You know what I mean? And look up to me and say, okay, this guy is fired. Okay. You know I mean? mm -hmm. <laughs> then, uh, in conclusion, the uh, time is not with us. I'm over. Yeah. There's an upcoming artist there that is watching you and obviously would want to learn one or two things from you. What message do you have to that upcoming artist? You know, the thing is, um, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, young people just rushing into trying to do music, you know what I mean? And they do it for the wrong reasons, you know what I mean? So for some of them, they just jump just because, oh no, which are not hitting you, Hey, I'm not a casino, I'm not a casino, and they also want to try and do that, you know what I mean? You need to understand and treat music like a business. It, because it is a business. That's the only way it will make money for you. If you treat it as just a, 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 a platform for you to become famous, that's all. Yeah, you know what I mean? And music takes up a lot of your time. Like I said, it's a business, so you need to invest in it. You need to invest time, you need to invest, invest resources. So what it is, is if you're in school, don't combine music and school. Finish school and then afterwards pursue, pursue music as a career if that's what you want. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Amoba. Yeah. Finally, Mr. Amoba, <coughs> uh, what new products, uh, projects are we expecting from Amoba? Uh, I'm actually currently in the studio. Okay. Yes, I'm putting an, an album together. I cannot really say it now when it will be released exactly. But so, uh, and people should look out for a single pretty soon for me. But the album is still being worked on, so I will announce the release date soon. Are you also signed, like I've seen the Cabal or Evodavao of these other artists <laughs> that are rushing to Kalandanya Music Production and also Nexus? Are you under any Cabal? <laughs> What is Kabao? The Kabao is a group of people. A group of people, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, it's no, well, as it as it stands, I'm not affiliated to any Kabao. Yeah. I will not ask much. Yeah, as it stands. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been chatting with the legendary Hamova. Hamova has done quite a number, a number of hit songs and of course he doesn't need any introduction. Every person that has dissected or dimitted their human optical paparazzi and his work can relate and can postulate, adumbrate and compend that he is a guru to reckon with. Obviously one day I would pray that any of our roads here in Zambia would be named after Hamova when he's still alive. Let's go on the other side and see if I can challenge me with the doctor, Professor Wanapsa Woko. Bye-bye.